We will now look at the object model in a practical context. We have an application page in this solution and it has a tree view control, an SP tree view in fact. And so we're going to add some code to populate this tree view with the hierarchy of the farm. Notice I have a using statement for Microsoft.SharePoint.Administration and this allows us to access the SP farm object. So the first thing that we do is declare an SP farm object called this farm and we instantiate it and set it to spfarm.local. Notice we have a number of different collections and properties that the SP farm object provides for us such as operational actions backup and restore but also collections of servers and services and um, other settings such as disabling caching or enabling caching and so forth. Now what we want to do in this demonstration is actually iterate through the farm's collections to show all of the objects that are that, that exist in this farm so um, we don't need any of those properties just yet. So we instantiate a new tree node and we clear it and then for each of the services in the spfarm.services collection we'll add a new uh, tree node. So we've cleared the tree completely and then started adding each service and we'll add its type and its display name. So let's go ahead and deploy that and we'll do a very quick test to see what we have at the very highest level underneath the SP farm objects. Let's browse to our application page which exists in the layouts folder and there we have all of the services in the farm. So some of them are web applications and some of them are services such as email, outgoing and incoming and timer services and so forth. But all of, the, all of these belong to the SP farm object. So we'll work a little bit further with sub-objects um, uh, presently. 